Hello and welcome to Data Driven, the podcast where we explore the emerging field of data science. We bring the best minds in data, software engineering, machine learning and artificial intelligence. Now here are your hosts, Frank Lavinia and Andy Leonard. Hello and welcome back to Data Driven, the podcast where we explore the emerging fields of data science, machine learning and artificial intelligence. If you like to think of data as the new oil, then you can consider us like car talk because we focus on where the rubber meets the virtual road. And with me on this epic trip down the information superhighway is everybody's favorite chief engineer, Andy Leonard. How are you doing, Andy? <laughs> I'm doing well, Frank. How are you? I'm doing great. It's uh, been an interesting week at Chateau Lavinia. Mm-hmm. Um, some, some, some definite uh, chaos monkeys in the universe. Um, <laughs> uh, well, you know this, but our listeners probably don't. Um, I guess we're recording this on September 6th. And um, this week, there was the Azure outage, which we kind of talked in depth about with uh, Stu. Mm-hmm. And um, my, I thought my transmission blew out on me. Oh, that was pretty brutal. Uh, so I'm like, oh, God, I got to go car shopping and all this. And right. Uh, or spend a lot of money to keep my current car and didn't really budget for that one. Um, <laughs> but um Fortunately, it was the axle snapped. That's crazy. I've never heard of an axle snapping. Neither did I. And what's weird is the mechanic said kind of the same thing. He he was like, wow. He 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 told me he's like, he called me and he was like, the axle snapped. And I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> like that too. And he goes, no no, transmission's fine. I'm like, what? And he goes, well, wow. and it's a you know it's a six hundred dollar repair neighborhood versus three thousand plus God knows what. Um, so I was naturally relieved, but when I was talking to him, I was like, he goes, does this happen often? Because I never heard of this. He goes, no, you know, it's funny. He, he said, yeah. up until six months ago, I'd never seen it. Wow. And I saw one six months ago, and you're the second one I've seen. Huh. And I was just kind of like. Sounds like a pattern to me, you know? Well, you never know. But I, it's funny you mention that, because that was my first thought. It's like, do you guys capture data on this sort of thing? <laughs> <laughs> and he just looked at me like. Mm, I guess, like in the mainframe or something, you point at the this Windows <laughs> old Windows box, and I was like, yeah. But I do wonder if there's wow. um there's a data set for that. That's the the data geek in me. How about you, Andy? What's new with you? That would be interesting if there's a data set for that. Um, you know, not much. Not much is new. Um, get you know, it's the end of summer, and we're past Labor Day. Um. It's a really interesting time of the year for consulting because usually the phone starts ringing around this time of year. And I would say it's probably the best time for sales on average uh, of the year. And it's because some folks start their fiscal year. Most folks start their fiscal year October 1st. Some have money they have to spend before October 1st. Others have money they're going to be able to spend after. And so it's an interesting time in our sales cycle. Um we are, uh, you know, getting ready to gear up, which means travel. Starting to look forward to the PASS Summit. That's coming up in uh, less than 10 weeks. Cool. So, yeah, it's. Uh, I think I think it's actually 10 weeks from now or maybe nine weeks from now. But anyway, yeah, PASS Summit. So early November then? Early November, the first week of November in Seattle. And a lot of people are starting to talk about it and plan for it. So, a lot of lot of cool stuff going on out there. I'm gonna cool. I'm gonna give out. Last year, I gave out a whole slew of data driven flyers. I'm gonna have some more. And this year, Frank, uh, Enterprise Data and Analytics is actually exhibiting, so we'll be handing nice. out Enterprise Data and Analytics uh, plus data driven flyers. Uh, at a- Maybe we'll have data driven stickers. Ooh, stickers! Stickers. I have a bunch of um, stickers printed up with the. Um... Uh, if you're familiar with the uh, Obey kind of graffiti meme. Yes. Um, um, yeah, I have one that says data. Nice. So I have the T-shirt. You have the T-shirt. And I have stickers. So. Well, maybe I'll get some T-shirts to give Ooh. away. I don't know. There's some rules about giveaways out there. I'll have to kind of check and see. But, yes, it would be nice to have a T-shirt uh, to, to give away. I think that would be an interesting promotion. But, anyway, looking forward to that. Um, our guest today is actually involved in PASS, and um, I, I, I consider Re a friend. Uh, maybe she considers me a friend, too. I don't know. hope so. Um, we go to a lot of the same events. Uh, I'll bet she'll be at the PASS Summit this year as well. 
And she's one of the smartest ladies I know. Uh, she does an awful lot in the community in the Atlanta area. And I'm very honored uh, to introduce Ree. She's worked with SQL Server since 2005. She's done uh, things with uh, a lot of upgrades. She's worked with availability groups. She understands data center migrations. She also works with SSIS, one of my favorite tools. And so with that brief introduction, Re, welcome to Data Driven. Thank you. And thanks for your, you're so sweet. <laughs> it's all true. All true. All <laughs> thanks true. for saying such good things. So Frank. <laughs> and Eddie is really sweet. <laughs> So, Frank, let me say, I hope the strangest thing that I hear all day today is, thank God, the axle snapped. <laughs> it's not something you hear every day, right? It's not, but it's also not something that you, you sound grateful for. <laughs> like, it, this is I, true. I was, you know, somebody, I'm going to hear that, and somebody's immediately going to think, wow, what was the alternative? That <laughs> <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Well, the alternative is a broken transmission, which is pretty much when I posted the picture of uh, the Thank car God. being towed away on Facebook. Thank God the axle snapped. Is, right. Yeah. <laughs> Although I'm sure a lot of people who work with uh, Guns N' Roses have, have no. thought that axle has snapped long ago. Where's that oh, sound true, effect, Frank? True. Here we go. <laughs> Actually, let me do it again. I'll explain why I had to do it again later. <laughs> Sorry. So. Uh, well, I'm really glad to be here today. So thanks for having me. Well, thank you so much, uh, Ree. You you were on a data point. Uh, I was down at the Azure Data Fest a couple weeks ago. And that was a, gosh, that, that was packed. I think it was sold out. Yes, absolutely. And it was just a lot of people. It there. was, yeah. Uh, you, we, we did a data point with you and Jeff Hyden and Stu. And I forget who else Julie. may have been. We, we got like everybody that walked by. And Julie. Right. Through. Julie's yeah. been Julie, again. right? Yeah. So I tried yeah. to stay out of the way so, over by the windows and mind my business. <laughs> I was so, not I, having it. That is true. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Which is funny because on the video, it looks like a witness protection program <laughs> video because you just see your silhouette because of the lighting and the camera. <laughs> And plus, you have an unusual name. Uh, yes. Yes, so I do. That would feed into the whole witness protection program uh, thing. I, so it's actually uh -oh. uh, the only other re RIE that I've met in my life. Um, two of them, and they're both Japanese. So, yeah. Huh. <laughs> well, I think. I think it's an interesting name, so I, I don't mean I don't mean that I'm not doing air quotes. It's a it's a nickname. Is it? Oh, it's okay. a nickname. It's not my. Yeah, it's not the name my mama gave oh, me. Okay, but st still okay. interesting. Thank you. So tell us about what you do. So I so like for a living, uh, what they pay me to do is I am the director of database management for a payment tokenization payment security and tokenization firm here in Atlanta. Um, and so I, what that means is I do some data work. I attend a lot of meetings. That's fine. <laughs> and, um, I, and I manage a team. So, I, but, you know, part of the meetings are about planning what we're doing. And right. Whether it's upgrades, migrations. Hey, how many servers do we have on SQL Server 2008? Because we need to get an end of life plan in place. You know, that's that's a lot of my wow. day. <laughs> Is that right there? So. Um, so your title says you're a director of database administration and management. So is it fair to say you're a DBA? So. Yes. Yes. Oh, I, well. Uh oh, there was a qualifier yes. there. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's not. No, no. It, there's. There is. There are not many days that go by that I'm not connecting to a server, right? And doing something. So I I wear a few hats. We're a small team. Gotcha. Um, but absolutely, I'm a DBA. And when I decide management is not for me anymore, that's what I'll do 100% of the time again. Interesting. So I have a question uh, that I like to ask. Uh, you know, real DBAs and that we find in the wild, so to speak. How do you feel about this AI thing. Do you feel that your turf is being encroached upon? 
Are you excited that enterprises are finally waking up and realizing that data is an asset? Well, so first of all, I think most enterprises don't really know what AI is. Mm -hmm, fair enough. They like a lot of vendors like to call, we've got AI. Um, do you really? Um, you know, what, what, is, what exactly does that mean to you? It's like everywhere I've ever worked, a CEO or somebody comes into my office or up to my desk and goes, we need BI. We've got to have it. <laughs> and I'll say, well, why don't you tell me what you think BI means? And then right. I'll tell you if we've already got it. So, um, so I'm not concerned about my job going away because we have AI. Um, if, if, if I had a dollar for every time I've been told the DBA is dead, that task is dead, it's not. Just like anything else, it's evolving. And, and it's, going to, it's going to evolve um, to involve AI and to involve data and, and how it gets used, uh, how it gets brought in, how it gets spit back out, and what it's used for. Um, I liked your comment that uh, data is the new oil because it certainly is. I mean, I feel like I am nothing but a big pile of data. Um, everything about me is data um, and everybody on the planet owns a piece of it because I use apps and, you know, I shop, you know, I'm pretty sure Target knows from the app that's on my phone what outfit I stood in front of for several minutes before walking on. Target knows a lot of things about people before family members know. So, about. You know, I, it's, do you, re do you remember that story about they sent information where the 15 year old daughter was pregnant and they sent yep. information about baby the father stuff? was livid and so, yeah, they're... he tore, he tore the manager a new one. And then a couple of days later, he, depending on who you believe, he came by and apologized or just called and apologized. Absolutely. Yeah. Big data. And said, you were right. I had a conversation with her. But there it was. It, part of what helped them predict was that the daughter had changed. That purchase, not necessarily the daughter, but Target recognized that, that purchases had changed. Like right. suddenly they were using unscented lotions. And um, had purchased a couple of other items. And that was, there's a pattern. You know, pregnant women get nauseous when they smell things sometimes. So, it, yeah, it's kind of scary. I don't want to find out that from Target. <laughs> <laughs> you have to wonder, though, like, you know, what else do they know? Uh, and there's Facebook, there's Twitter, you know, there's all sorts of data about, I mean, I think you nailed it when you said, you know, everybody on the planet has some piece of your data. Um, so I stuff. actually, I pondered recently at SQL Saturday Baton Rouge that if there was some data mining person at Marriott who wondered what was going on between a few of us because we're so frequently in the same hotel. <laughs> <laughs> that, I mean, it's SQL, it's SQL community people, you know, right, right. people that we speak at the same SQL Saturdays. I see them all the time. Um, we happen to, you know, we have status with Marriott, so that's where we stay. Um, a lot of us do. We communicate ahead of time. Which hotel are you staying in? Um, so I really think there's somebody somewhere at Marriott, and they have a like a big map, and they're putting these little pinpoints in the map to figure out who's having an affair with who. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you mention that because uh, Uber was, I think it was Uber did a um... absolute did a similar thing with, um, you know, early morning, you know, morning after Uber rides from different places. And they did a bunch of data analysis with different cities and stuff. Well, Uber also did a bunch of bad stuff with their data. They were allowing individuals in the company to log on and look at people's data. They were tracking people after they got out of an Uber, um, specifically like people they knew, ex-girlfriends, things like that. So Uber, Uber is an example of, what not to do oh yeah and in so many yeah. ways i mean they've 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 rubbed a lot of people the wrong way for so many reasons yes. in so many ways yeah. yeah totally which i think really brings up kind of the ethics side of this which is you know i i've never been a dba uh i never even played a dba on tv but until recently the pay is better. what the pay is better if you nah, play it probably on TV. is but uh <laughs> <laughs> um but I mean, has ethics been a thing like in, in, in the DBA world or is this just 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 because of the power in um, 
damage that AI, AI can do or data uh, analytics can do. So, so I think um, some of this isn't DBAs. This is, and at least specifically for Uber, it was upper management. It's really, right. it's really hard when somebody in upper management comes to your desk and demands access to something to say no. Right. Um, I have actually looked at a, a boss before and said, you can fire me. Well, that's a good DBA right there. Um, I'm it? not, you can't, you don't have access to that. You can just fire me. Right. Um, uh, and wow. and who, who's going to actually fire you? You want to explain that to the EEOC? Or, <laughs> you know, the lawyer <laughs> well, that's that you talk to? Yeah. So right, right. we would have been, they would have been called right. before the EEOC. So yeah, absolutely. Fire me. Right. And I would have no problem going to another job when they say, why did your employment at this last job end? And I would say they asked me to do something unethical. Good for you. I don't think, uh, I think a lot of people would have been intimidated in that I space. Was say. Yeah. Although right. DBAs are cut from that. Doesn't DBA stand for don't bother asking? It stands for a lot of things. <laughs> that is one of them, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love my sound effects. Sorry, Ray. <laughs> That's okay. We're good. <laughs> Well, one of the questions we ask folks, uh, Re, is how did you find your way into data? Did data find you or did you find data? So I am, I am so lucky that I stumbled into this job that suits the way my brain works. And um, I actually, my, I have an undergraduate and a master's degree in sociology. Um, I was in grad school as a, and I was a graduate assistant at Auburn University. But um, cool. we were uh, wanting to collect data and do analysis on it, you know, surveys and all this kind of stuff. Right. But we didn't have the tools to do it. Um, what we were doing was we, we, you can purchase large data sets from other people where they've collected data and they've entered it. And so we could purchase that and they would upload it to the mainframe at the university. And to do analysis on it, we would either have to submit uh, essentially the questions we wanted to ask to the IT department of the university and they would get around to it whenever they got around to it. Mm. Um, but I started teaching myself SAS so that I could ask it myself. You know, I didn't, I'm impatient apparently. <laughs> and didn't want to wait on them and they didn't care if you know suddenly i'm gonna be not asking them to do stuff right so i started pecking around and trying to figure it out nice now, then but then i found something called spss which is the statistical package for the social sciences and i convinced my department to purchase it wow and that's not a trivial cost so it wasn't, we didn't have to buy like some enterprise license. Oh, you know, cause it was academic. Like Got it. Okay. Yeah. It was just, we bought it for the department and it wasn't that horrible. And they actually installed it directly on my machine. Whoa. <laughs> so, I mean, right. So, but we ended up um, putting it on several others, but it started with me. Nice. And um, then these professors in the department figured out, Hey, we've got this girl who can analyze data and I've got this stack of questionnaires, literally a stack of paper questionnaires that I've been wanting to do something with. And they'd walk in and drop it on my desk. No. Hey, can you do something with this? Interesting. Um, okay. <laughs> so my very first job out of grad school um, was with Nielsen Media Research. Hmm. Interesting. Um, and, and it's because I knew SAS. Um, from there, I shifted to a university where I was the um, research coordinator. And what that meant was, so in, in Georgia, every university has to create a bunch of data, a bunch of information, take the data that they have and create a bunch of information to send to the state's uh, demographics about their school, their student body, their professors, how people break down um, into what majors are, a lot of different things like that. And so that was the job that I got because I was doing data analysis. And that was, that was pretty interesting. I, mean, I, I actually learned a lot about the university system yeah. and how, how reporting works and that kind of stuff. And I even had, I mean, there were aspects of my job that weren't technical, but from there I went to work for a nonprofit that did, um, 
tax data and they uh, for nonprofits and they partnered with the IRS and I was a data analyst there and then one Friday afternoon I got an email from the senior DBA that said hey since you I, at that point I'd taken a couple of SQL classes on my own and was trying to peck through our data myself and um, he I got an email that said, hey, on Monday when you come to work, you're going to be the new junior DBA. Were you happy to hear that, said, or were you that like? Very much so. I had already even gone to the VP of IT to talk about my future in the company and what I wanted to do. Um, and he turned out to be a fantastic boss. Uh, I really, really, really helped me grow up to a point. But I emailed him back, said, does this come with a pay raise? <laughs> and he replied, no. And I said, then I will accept being allowed to add the word junior to my name <laughs> in my email signature. And he said, okay, deal. <laughs> so I was re Irish junior, junior DBA. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I left it like that for about six months <laughs> just because it entertained me. But instead, instead of a, instead of a pay grade, I got a, <laughs> I was a junior. But he turned out to be, a great boss in that when I came up on a problem and I would say, Rich, I don't know, I don't know how to solve this. He would give me half an inch <laughs> of the direction I needed to go and then say, now go figure it out. That is good. Um, he rewrote every, he <laughs> reformatted every piece of code I ever wrote <laughs> Cause he didn't like the way I formatted it. It drove me crazy, but I actually think that I now still format code a little bit the way that he did. Um, I did, I did outgrow the position a, probably a good while before I left. I mean, I was with the company for six years. I was very comfortable. I made his life very comfortable. Um, and I, I think he could have done a better job of encouraging me by like shoving me out of the nest. But the lesson that I've learned from that is that now that I'm a manager, I recognize right. that it's my job to mentor the people I hire and to make sure they are getting everything out of this job and that they haven't outgrown it. And so far, I haven't had to shove anybody out of the nest, but it does allow me to throw bigger problems at them. Interesting. It's always uh, it's always those those coaches or mentors that you've had that push you that at the time you're like really but uh, I think over time you you appreciate their they're doing that I remember one guy I worked for forced me to use VI which for you kids out there is a very old um, text editor on Unix and it is not known for its usability but I... um, oh, go ahead. <laughs> no I was gonna say my very first task as his DBA was we migrated Oracle to SQL Server 2000 and nobody told me that was supposed to be hard. <laughs> you didn't know. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. Uh, we just, but I, that's what I had to learn to use VI right. to get, because it was Oracle on Linux or Unix. So Toad was a, was a thing about that time too, right? I had, yes, I actually have used Toad. Was it um, that term Inc or something like that? That's how you get. All these, all these like horrible flashbacks of working with Oracle are coming back to me now. This, this was actually, wow, how long ago was this? This was shortly after my daughter was born. So this was probably 2002. Mm -hmm. I am hopeful that I remember none of it. So <laughs> I'm, ho I'm hopeful that enough time has passed that it's just all purged. <laughs> purged. Well, very cool. Um, so what would you say your favorite part of your current gig is, Ree? I It's, pr it's probably the mentoring my team. And I'm, I'm not necessarily mentor in a traditional sense, um, but sponsoring my team, which is a concept I've introduced because um, I learned about it a couple of years ago as part of my work with women in tech. So matching them, you know, working with my team and matching them up with tasks that they want to do and that they're going to be passionate about. Um, and luckily, uh, there's a little bit of overlap in what they're passionate about, but mm -hmm. they're also interested in very, very different things. So I can just let them run when they when they find something that they want to work at. So um, 
I, I really love uh, this broader picture that I have of the, of the company and as a whole, plus the micro work that my company is doing and how that fits into where the company is going. Right. You it's mentioned, really cool sorry, part of that. <laughs> you mentioned uh, women in tech. And yes. I know you do a lot with that. I know you're that's, one of the leaders in the SQL Server community. That's my jam. Yeah, that's my jam. Yeah. Talk about that song. <laughs> wow. So I, I think it's been two and a half years since Kathy Kellenberger and I took over the Women in Tech group for PASS. And I, th I before I took this over, I was um, moderating panels at SQL Saturdays, discussions on women in tech topics. And um, I, I think I've always been passionate about it because there are a number of jobs that I've had in my two plus decades of being in IT mm -hmm. um, where I was the only female. Wow. Period. In IT, only female. Wow. Um, and I, to be honest, that can kind of suck. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and of course, then I had my daughter and that changes your perception for the world because of how it's going to treat her and how, how things are for you. Right. Um, but I, it, it, I thought this was, this was a, a place where I could affect some positive change, even if it's one person at a time. Every SQL Saturday that I attend, in addition to presenting, I end up having a conversation with someone who asks me some pretty serious questions and I give them some pretty serious answers. Yeah. And I think it probably helps that I'm, I'm a capital F feminist and I am so unapologetic about it. <laughs> um, but <laughs> I don't hate men. I love men. Y'all open jars. <laughs> so... Um, um, but, and so to, to sit down with somebody and have a conversation and have them ask me how should, so this situation comes up at work, how should I handle this? Right. And to be able to give them some constructive advice on here's how you should approach this. This is what I think she would appreciate. Um, if you handled this, this way at work and they're all like, Oh, I, awesome. That's great. Thank you. So one person at a time. Right. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm trying to make a difference. And obviously I'm trying it on a bigger scale too. I had the advantage. I, I had the honor of speaking at pre day last year at MVP summit in Seattle. Oh, cool. And, um, yeah, <laughs> I think it may be the biggest room, uh, largest crowd I've ever spoken to live. And, uh, but I, I spoke about, um, representing and supporting women's voices in it and in business and, I always come up with anytime I run any kind of panel or session or whatever, it's really, really easy for it to turn into a gripe session because it sucks for a lot of women out there in IT. Yeah. But I, I, I always intro with it's really important that um, if you come to me with a problem that you walk away with a solution. Whether I tell you how you could have handled that, whether we ask somebody else in the audience how they would have handled that, or I ask you to come up with what do you think you should have done. Um, so that it's all solution oriented. I really, really want, you know, and uh, there are times where it, it really does start to devolve into just a gripe session and I'll just put the brakes on it. Stop. We're losing focus. This isn't going to help anybody. If you'd like right. to talk to me about this later, we can. Uh, but it was, it was quite the honor. And I ended up after that session at um, MVP Summit, um, ended up in the corridor outside of the room for over an hour with people asking me questions Wow! about very specific things they needed feedback or advice on. So I, it was wonderful. It was absolutely wonderful. That's cool. So as a data head or data person here, do you, have you seen patterns in the questions mm -hmm. that you get? Does the same thing come up again? Is it, uh, you know, is what's the distribution there? Do, yes. you, do you have one? <laughs> is, is it predictable? Oh, okay. Well, so it's predictable based on what I talked about. I mean, obviously, you know, the questions that I get are geared more toward what it is that I've talked about. Um, inevitably, I get the question, well, what do you do when you have a female boss 
who's a real, you know, insert pejorative. Um, yes. So, or when I, it always baffles me, even when I have women in the crowd who will say, well, oh yeah, sometimes it's right. women. And uh, of course it is. I, anybody can be a jerk. And I've even told people, you know, I've had somebody come to me with a problem about a boss or whatever. And I'm like, you know what? I, I hate to I hate to say this. It doesn't sound like right. he's a sexist. It sounds like he's, you know, a jerk. But I don't say jerk. Right. Um, it sounds like he's just not a nice guy. He, he's an equal opportunity offender. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, my advice as the women in tech person isn't going to be effective. Now, my advice as a, someone who holds a master's degree in sociology is going to be really effective. Let me tell you how to manipulate him. <laughs> right. <laughs> I was going to ask, like, how does that how, uh, imagine that it's probably not a, a well-traveled path, but you probably have some interesting um special powers and skills because of it I, I i can maybe i'll show andy this the next time we're together i can i can make people walk in a circle men specifically walk in a circle based on what i know about how men handle um personal space <laughs> oh wow uh, huh <laughs> yeah so <laughs> but and i'll do it sometimes i hate oh, wow. i'll do it sometimes <laughs> because if i can get someone to physically retreat they will verbally, emotionally, whatever retreat and, and be more open to what huh. it is that we're talking about. Wow. It's not like I do it to humiliate anybody or whatever, but um, it's called verbal judo. <laughs> um, ah, I had a college professor who wrote a book about it. Interesting. And huh. I was like, oh, I, I can do this. And it helps that I'm 5'7". I mean, if you're five two and you're trying to get somebody to do that, it's less effective. Right. But um, right. it has to do with being in their space and making them just a tad uncomfortable. So, Interesting. <laughs> yeah. That is um, so our next question is um, complete the sentence. And we have a few of these. When I'm not working, I enjoy blank. Um, watching sports. Interesting. I am. Oh yeah. <laughs> I see you're a bat. Uh, I'm going to pronounce it wrong. Is it Bama or Bama? Well, it's Alabama. Oh, so it's the University okay. of Alabama, their football team. Um, got it. Fans. Even though I, I know I went to, I got my graduate degree at Auburn. Um, that's the big rival. Um, I'm a Bama fan. I watch Bama football loudly. <laughs> um, I'm a Falcons fan, Atlanta Falcons here. Um, and so I actually didn't see the Alabama game last Saturday because my boyfriend and I were at a baseball game. <laughs> Here in Atlanta, so we go to a lot of. We, there's a AAA team that feeds the Atlanta Braves about 11 about 11 miles from my house. Oh, cool! And um, so we go to we go to a couple of games a month all summer long. And this past Saturday was the last one, and I finally convinced my daughter to go to a game because um, her boyfriend came. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, she texts <laughs> me a couple of innings in because we let them go sit. There's this big grassy area in the outfield. We let them go sit back there. And um, she texted me a couple of innings in and said, baseball is boring. And I replied, and water is wet. <laughs> so, I mean, if you, if you don't, if you have no idea what's going on or who the players are or anything, baseball can be really boring. True. But I, I watch a lot of sports. My In the fall, my whole weekends are football. So I do love it. A few years ago, Andy, so we were talking football at Summit, and some uh, one of the guys asked me, they were like, oh, you like football, huh? <laughs> With this tone. Really? And I'm standing around, yes, I'm standing around talking to a bunch of other SEC guys, and one of them nudged him and said, dude, this is going to hurt. Because <laughs> <laughs> he, he was like, oh, who's your favorite Falcon? Like, I wouldn't be able to name a Falcons player. Seriously. <laughs> So, yeah, you know, I went off for a couple of minutes and then he was like, oh, but yeah, his, he, his question was, oh, well, is your boyfriend a Falcons fan? <laughs> no. Oh, wow. uh, so, yeah. Well, he Sports, had that coming. Uh, sounds like he like <laughs> stepped in, not only stepped in it, but like. Yeah. Oh, totally. Stepped in it hard. <laughs> I said, please, may I be beaten? That's it. You know, like. Tracked it through the house. <laughs> yeah. Well, our next. Yeah. 
our uh, our next complete this sentence is I think the coolest thing in technology today is blank. Uh, probably AI, real AI, and and what it can do. And I mean, we have robot vacuums. Not even just the not even just the <laughs> old ones that just kind of like ran around and bumped into stuff. But right that map your house and know where they vacuumed yesterday. Something that simple. Yeah. My vacuum can talk to Alexa and tell me at work when it's done. I can't get my daughter to vacuum. My son acts like uh, we're torturing him when we ask him to dishwasher. But my <laughs> vacuum will tell me yeah. when it's done. You know, oh, right now wow. I have to call my daughter and say, hey, just wanted to let you know I'm on my way home so that she knows <laughs> she has about 20 minutes to empty the dishwasher. That's what the, I mean, it's that dance we do, you know. So. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, no, she definitely acts like I'm torturing her. But right. it'll be worse <laughs> if I get home and she hasn't emptied it. So. Yeah. Interesting. Well, Ree, um, we have uh, one more fill in the blank. I look forward to the day when I can use technology to blank. Wow. I, so this is this is one of those that I really struggled with because um, so much is happening yeah. so fast. I, just about anything I fill in the blank here, we're already doing. You know, even yeah. um, medical stuff. What where I can I can log on to my computer and talk to a doctor and get diagnosed. So, uh, you know, right. I, but I, you know, I probably make sure people don't go hungry. I think would be, that's, that's my thing. That's my charity is, is food banks. And yeah. my daughter has a rule that if she's ever out with friends or whatever, and somebody doesn't have money for food, she better feed them. People don't get to go hungry. Very so cool. I look forward to the day when we use yeah. technology to make sure people get fed. Something that simple that I take for granted. I have a, you know, a couple of bags of nuts in my desk. So I, yeah, and people don't even have that. They don't have fresh water. So yeah, yeah. I totally get that. Yeah. So um, one other thing we like to ask guests is to share something different about yourself. I think you've already shared a couple things that are different. About uh, well, yourself. so here's the, here's um, this, this odd thing. I tap dance. How's that? <laughs> I did, oh, I, wow. So I okay. Did take That's dance interesting. We couldn't afford it. You know, uh, working class family, three daughters. I didn't get to take classes. So I started dance as an adult and took, and took tap and other classes for about 10 years. Um, and only, only stopped taking classes when I moved down here to Georgia. What, what if, can you make us dance so, in a circle though? Just don't ask me mm -hmm. to Very dance cool. for you. I, I, I can always I will, take I, it to the I'll next level. Like, <laughs> I will do that. If you, if I, if I there get you go. walk in a circle, I'll like do some shuffle hop step for you or something like that. Something. Okay. No, I can't. <laughs> Absolutely. If that is, now I have a goal. <laughs> There's one last question we do ask, um, and it was not on the invite. Uh, we need to update that now that we're in season two. Uh, Audible is a big sponsor of ours. We love Audible. Personally, I think I've, um, uh, if you look at the chart of how many books I bought, it's alarming. Mm -hmm. I think I've, um, it's exponential growth. Um, do you, are you into audiobooks? Um, I, a little, I don't have, I, I, I don't have a long commute anymore. I don't spend a lot of time in the car. So, right. um, I, not mm. as much as I should be. I still love to read a paper book. <laughs> There's something about that feel of dead trees. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, it's not, you know, they breed these trees. They grow these trees just for paper. <laughs> I'm just it's being not like we suddenly stop buying books. <laughs> There'll be more trees. They'll stop planting those trees. So. <laughs> I do. I like, right. I like being able to move a bookmark forward and, right. and kind of doze off while I'm laying there under it and the book falls and hits me, you know? <laughs> gotcha. 
anything uh anything interesting you're reading now um i let's see what have i read recently uh, so one of the books I, I i probably read this one about a year ago but i tell people about it all the time it's a book called technically wrong hmm. and it addresses um bias that seeps into the applications that we build oh interesting and it's it it absolutely changed the way i look at everything so technically wrong this is a hot topic and i think one of the problems are i think people understanding bias in data is the word bias itself i think right. there's a certain uh, implication of malice yeah where most of the time there's not it's just bias might just be baked into the process of certainly collecting data well so so i anytime i do any kind of session if we're going to talk about bias i actually define bias at their beginning and that definition changes based on what we're going to talk about right, um, right. but for application bias i am i say in this particular case it is the introduction of skew hmm. Hmm. and so like so for a facial recognition software it's biased because the original data set was 85% white men. Hmm. So it's learned based on a faulty data set so that it's really, really bad at recognizing um, African-American female. Right. Um, the, the failure rate is really, really high for African-American um, females. It's slightly better for African-American males, slightly better for um, white females and then dead on accurate for white guys. And, but it's because the original data set they used, I think contained like members of the House of Parliament in the UK or something. So gotcha. mostly white guys. So it's yeah. learning algorithm is based on a skewed set. So if we got something wrong there and, and nobody has put in enough time until fairly recently into fixing how AI learns with facial recognition. Right. Um, you, you have to, you have to kind of undo. That's, that is interesting. So I looked up, uh, it actually is on audible as an audiobook. Technically wrong. And awesome. technically wrong. Four and 0.4 stars. Wow. And, um, five hours, 42 minutes. And here's the good news for our listeners. If you go to the data driven book.com, uh, or the data driven book.com. <laughs> see, see what I did there. Either of those. Um, work, yeah. <laughs> you will get one free book and uh, this could be your free book nice. or yeah, it's pretty cool. And if you sign up for the subscription, which audiobooks are very addictive. So, you know, heads up there, um, you know, we'll, we'll get a certain amount of money. It's a great way to support the show. Also, I think one of the things I've learned over the last couple of years, is the importance of lifelong learning. And, um, you know, I do a lot of, um, War, I do a lot of driving. Unlike you, I spend a lot of time in my car. Uh, <laughs> so I really enjoy having audiobooks as there as a way to, you know, enrich, you know, make make use of that time. Yeah, same here. Uh, definitely. Uh, we also have uh, T-shirts available, Frank. Um, and That's right. We're fancy now. We're on Amazon. We're on Amazon. That's right. So, so if you do a search for data graffiti. Um, yeah. That's the keywords apparently somehow magically I managed to own, quote unquote. So nice. we're the first result. Nice. Plus something about Weird. vandalism, oddly enough. <laughs> oh, but that even works with the stickers that you were talking about earlier. Oh, really? The stickers are there too? No, no. You mentioned that they look like data in graffiti. Oh, they do. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you a picture and we'll post a picture in the show notes. <laughs> was, that, was that on purpose or is that just... Oh, that's on purpose. It, so there's a... Um, we love sidetracks on the show, Ray. So... <laughs> um, but yeah, so there was a, there was this graphic artist. I think he, I, I looked it up cause uh, he, he, he went to the Rhode Island school of design and he worked in New York or something like that. And he basically, it started with the picture of Andre the giant and the words obey under it. So if you're familiar <laughs> with that, and then I got the idea for the data one, cause I was somewhere and I saw somebody had a, um, a picture of, um, the same style of um, uh, the guy from The Big Lebowski. And underneath it, instead of obey, it said abide. Oh, so it was the dude. It was the dude, yeah. I was thinking, I couldn't think of Jeff Bridges' name, but yeah, the dude. So it was like, 
Um, so it said abide, and I was like, that's cool. And then like somehow uh, in PowerPoint, you have icons now. Um, PowerPoint 2016, you go to insert, and one of the things is um, it's an icon of a duck and a leaf. If you click on that, there's a whole bunch of icons in there um, that you can use in your presentations and, and that stuff. But one of them is a data thing. And when I inserted it in my PowerPoint presentation, just by chance or luck, it looked a lot like that obey slash abide thing. And I'm like, hey, you know, and that's how the, it was born. It was nice. magic. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Ree, thank you so much for being on the show today. This was thank awesome. You. Yeah, thank you. It's uh, it's an honor to have you. And um, uh, you, um, the data point you were on was fun. So I encourage folks to go watch that too. And um, and where's the place people can find out more about what you're up to? Do you have a blog, Twitter handle? I am. So I am at Irish SQL. I okay. also run at pass under bar wit, but you can follow the pass wit hashtag. Um, okay. I have a blog that I'm horrible about writing for and it's <laughs> repedia.net okay because my friends jokingly call me repedia because i am full of really stupid useless information <laughs> <laughs> I, doubt that. I remember the dumbest things um and i don't know and i'll say well everybody knows that and <laughs> everybody looks at me and goes no re just just <laughs> you so, that's funny yeah. all right Very well cool. with that um we want to be respectful of your time re and um Thanks for coming on the show, and we'll let the nice British lady finish the show. Thanks for listening to Data Driven. Don't just listen. Become a data driver by going to datadriven.tv to sign up to join the community, access to special events, tips and tricks, and more. Sign up today at datadriven.tv.